What's up guys and welcome back to Just In Time. So I wanted to switch things up a little bit. So I'm here recording in my car. Do you like this lighting? Do you like this lighting? Do I look good? Yeah, I got some natural sunlight for you guys. End game. Have you guys watched it? Don't worry, there's no spoilers in this particular video. He's lying, get out of here. Get out of here. Nah, nah, but seriously, you're good, you're good. Of course, of course there's no spoilers, of course. So the video I want to make today is not so much about like what the movie was about but it's actually my experience in the actual movie theater so what I mean by this is that uh, I watched it I think uh, a few nights ago for the second time so I watched it the first time I think like, last week and then a few nights ago I watched it again and this time it was somewhere in um, Chiras Salatan somewhere there I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the area but I, I brought uh, Rebecca there to go and watch the movie again it was late at night about 10.30 and so I have, bearing in mind right, I have already watched this show so I know what's happening, it's not so much of a surprise for me but other people in the cinema may have been experiencing this movie for the first time. The reason I want to point that out is because like throughout the movie uh, I was seated in the fourth row from the front so I was pretty, pretty near the screen and in front of me there was this whole row of young infants, they were basically like little boys lah, it was a I think from the looks of it, maybe age range from maybe about 11 to 14, somewhere there. So the whole row of them, about five of them, throughout the entire movie, they did not shut up. Like legit, the whole movie, they were just laughing really, really loudly. They were talking to each other throughout the movie from start to finish. And they were not even like doing it subtly or just like talking to them like that. There were times that this guy actually got up from his seat and turned to the fella like this. It was very, very, very distracting and again, like I said, I have watched it. So I know what's coming I, my, and my attention is already divided. So I cannot even imagine for the people who are watching it for the very, very first time. It must be so, so annoying and they're just laughing at serious parts, laughing at sad parts, laughing at fighting scenes. It was just very, very obnoxious and it was very, very noticeable that the people around me, uh, sitting next to me, they were like kind of cock staring them. So, you know, your boy doing what I do. I gotta handle the business, you know? I gotta handle this. So, your boy, I, 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 didn't, I didn't do anything. I was too scared that they would fight back, so. But it was actually Rebecca who spoke up first and this really made me feel like a little puss because she actually had the guts to stand up to them and she just, out of the blue, she was just like, shh, like crazily loudly and obviously that got the attention of everybody but the people around us, they were kind of like smiling at her because I think they also sang mong, uh -huh. they, they appreciate her doing that and right as she did that the there was a, I think there was an Indian gentleman sitting right next to them this dude just threw his box of popcorn across the cinema and right after Rebecca did her whole shh thing like stunned quite a few people and right after that the dude turned to these guys because he was right next to them and took he, he had two boxes of popcorn I don't know where he's getting two boxes of popcorn and just like slammed it onto the little kid and I love him so much for doing that there is a special place in heaven for you sir and there's a special place in hell for the kids so right after that they quieted down for a little bit a few minutes later the noisiest of all the kids legit he stood up and he walked to the right hand side of the cinema which is where I am so that happened on the left hand side and he just started talking again if you're talking in a fighting scene there's a lot of there's a lot going on so it's a bit less distracting but there was a sad scene and so obviously the music is very very low the whole cinema is quiet and this punk in front of me after he had two boxes of popcorn thrown at him starts giggling and laughing to his friend again in front of me so I'm like what type of dumbass after you had someone shush you two boxes of popcorn flung at you you just keep talking in the cinema like it is so disrespectful and it's just unethical they just are not considerate whatsoever and so i started getting shifty and i mean rebecca was getting worried about what i was about to do la. so again your boy got a second chance to handle his business yeah i i didn't do anything again so no, but after a while, it got pretty agitating, so I kicked his chair and he looked back and I gave him like my best cock stare. <laughs> That's the best I could do. But I really, really stared him down because I didn't want to be like shushing or asking him to shut up because I didn't want to try to solve this problem, create another scene like me being loud. So I just really, really glared at him as hard as I could. Not even one or two minutes later, he starts laughing again. 
So at that point, I'm just pissed off. I'm also just very angry that he's doing this. But it's not so much for me that again, I have watched the movie, but he was not considered at all to the entire Cineplex. So after that, I really gave him like another good three kicks. Yeah, man, you're gangster. Gave him another good three kicks to the chair. He turned around again, and I was like, just like looking at him like this, really, really cock staring him down. For the rest of that, he was quiet. I will admit, after that, your boy chickened out. I mean, like, obviously, like, Rebecca is with me also, so I don't want to fight. But if it did come to a fight, you know, I'm, I'm a cut a fool. I'm a cut a fool. Man, I'm gonna take all five of y'all, all of y'all, with your little punk ass dude. But no, nothing happened. Rebecca was there, so. Let's just go with the fact that Rebecca was there, so I didn't want I didn't want to cause a scene, you know. I'm I'm gonna get Rebecca injured, no. But I could have taken him. I could have taken him. But needless to say, the rest of the night went pretty okay. Uh, my car battery was loose, so I had to in the rain. But it was raining at the end of the movie, so I had to just pop the hood, fix up the battery a little bit. But that was basically my experience then, and my takeaway point was just like be considerate la like be considerate just it really really made me think of not only them but their parents like for me because again i try to be an advocate of like counseling and everything because i hold that really dear that was my major so if you guys are new to this channel and everything i am a psychology major i did it uh with the heart of taking counseling in the future in in the future so i do try to educate any friends aunts or uncles or just other people who you know extra knowledge are for them and i put a lot of emphasis on parenting because the one thing that i think of when i see kids like that is like what are the parents doing that they are not taught this simple mannerism and this simple etiquette that in a movie theater just shut up and enjoy the movie lah. And legit, dude, it's freaking Endgame, man. It's an it's like one of the most anticipated. It's like the biggest movie of the current year and maybe in a couple years to come. And you're just causing like, and you're just causing a racket lah, basically. So yeah, not sure how these parents are parenting their little punk ass kids, but that's what. I thought about the whole situation and this kind of got me thinking as well as that little saying um, where it's if good people are not speaking up it's like basically you're doing evil as well something like that so with people and like dumb fools of society who are doing stuff like this if none of us are speaking up on behalf of everybody else I think that this thing kind of keeps on going and it will not change as hard as it is and as against our Asian culture as it, as it is I think that we should still be the advocates of change so it was super super scary don't get me wrong to just kind of like kick these fellas chairs because I'm not sure what's gonna happen I hope that the other fellas in the cinema would still stand up for Rebecca and I if something went down but I think that it's still up to us to at least voice out even that dude that threw the popcorn God bless his soul was like in his own way speaking up against that dude like shut up and you know be polite to the people around you polite Throw popcorn. But yeah, I hope that if we are ever put in similar situations like this, that we would have the courage to stand up and just like kind of do the right thing uh, in that sense. Once again, thank you guys for watching this episode. I will, I guess, try to switch things up a little bit. I do find filming in my room very, very boring, which is why I cannot bring myself to do it. It is fun to film on the road, so kind of like in between my appointments and in between meeting friends and all this, I have this kind of like downtime. It is fun to just film it then. So maybe I'll do that and let me know if you guys like seeing like different environments. You'll probably just see more of my car. That was today's episode. If you liked it, do give it a thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Share it. I really do appreciate you guys giving me your attention and even sharing the video with all of your other friends. Do leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Until next time, bye.